didn't realize how much water there is underground. This is some PTSD stuff right here. But I was helping. And copyright. Ovis, where have you been? I've missed you so much. Hey Ovis, when's your next video? You're so bloody good at videoing. These are just two of the couple of comments I got since I've been gone. Well guys, I'm back with an absolute banger. Maybe, we'll see how it goes, it's been a while. Um, but we've got a few things to talk about today. One of which includes this pie. Well the video is actually about this pie, not this exact pie. But um, XP in general. Uh, but you can also talk about the huge news that Boundless has been taken over by Monumental Game Studios, which I'll talk about my, you know, give I'll give you my opinion on that later on. Um, I overall think it's a good thing, but, uh, you know, we'll get into that later. But today we're going to be talking about XP. Um, I'm not going to be talking about region, uh, region farms, which is what this area is here, but I do want to show them off. So if you go to GTG which is in the middle of the TNT hub, just here, go through GTG. GTG have their own region XP farm, which, if you don't know what these are, you basically walk through one of these portals, you explore the new region, you, which you get XP for, you walk back out again, walk into the next one, get the XP, and for every region you explore, you actually get more and more XP. It's like 100 extra XP from the previous regions. The first one's like 100. This is with the teaching pie, by the way. The first one's 100, next one's 200. Next one after that is 300. So, yeah, it adds up, adds up, adds up. Adds up to about, for a 64 region um, planet, I think it's about two, I think it's like 200,000. It's, it's just over a level, I believe, uh, just for walking in and out of portals. But yeah, so GTG has one, and also the Future Farms has one too which is just through this portal here. So get, definitely go check those out. But today's video is not going to be about region XP. It's going to be the Ovis way of making XP, which means we're going to be building something in our base, which we have yet to build in. Huge news. So let's head there now. If you're wondering what I've been doing uh, since my last video, like off camera, uh, not much really. I've done the odd mining session, I've done the odd smelting, the odd bit of glass making. I haven't really been playing much, to be honest, which I didn't want to do without recording, so here we are now. Um, I am currently ill in real life. I'm just getting over a cold. So if I pause and it seems a bit abrupt, that's because I've just been coughing. Also, my voice seems a bit raspy and maybe even slightly better. That's because I'm uh, a bit ill. Two days ago, my voice sounded amazing. I mean, amazingly ill, but like Barry White ill. So really, really cool. Uh, but that is fading, sadly. So I'm making some alloy, so I can then make uh, titanium alloy. So I can then compact that into compact titanium, which is somewhere here. And then, so I can make that into refined titanium. So I can then make that into machine titanium. And when you place machine titanium, let's go grab some, just, just so I can show you. Okay, so we've got some machine titanium. So let's go into the basin. So let's uh, look at my XP in the top right hand corner. I place this and I get 80 XP. Now I believe ti uh, machined titanium is the most amount of XP you can get for placing a block uh, before Lucent Gem Blocks because Lucent Gem Blocks are very expensive and I have not got the coin for that at the moment um, I've got 90,000 coin uh, I could also mine for them but I don't really go mining often and also I haven't got the materials so what I do have access to at the moment is machined titanium so as I said you get 80 for each block placed so let's just do this and your XP starts to shoot up. The idea of this, uh, it's a bit, it is good, because it is a good way of getting XP. However, it's a bit, could be a bit boring, and also, when, once you've placed all of it, you've then got to go around and um, break all of it, right? Which can be a bit fiddly, unless you've kind of got a, a solidified area to do so. 
Also, it can be a bit fiddly placing it all, because the ideal kind of formation for placing these blocks would be in a 3x3 three three tube, I guess. Going long ways, your horizontal or vertical, just so you can AOE, um, get your AOE hammer and just harvest it all back. So today we're going to be building something that is going to make it easy for us to place a bunch of these uh, machine titanium blocks and also in the future decorative lucent gem blocks uh, in a easy formation and very quickly and efficiently so then we can just break it all and then jump back and replace it all again but we're going to be using a glide track if you don't know what a glide track is it is this up here uh, I've made a video about it before and I've made videos about all sorts of things to do with glide tracks uh, let's just set this up just to give you a quick example if you don't know what it is it uses trampoline and ice right so this is the glide track okay so we're gonna go up here chisel that in the correct way and basically if you just hold spacebar, hold jump, you go along, right? And with this, you can make turns, you know, turns go up, go down, go left, go right. If you're interested in what this is, how it works, check out my video on my channel. I'll put a link to it um, in the description below. But check that out, it will fully describe, or fully tell you what this is about. So basically, we're going to be using this in an intricate way uh, so we can align ourselves to place the titanium blocks in this formation. So hopefully we'll be able to farm up some very easy XP and it's going to be the first build in our uh, base location which we are finally getting started on. The location of this build is underground at Mantle. Let's get out of here. On the south side of my hole, whatever you want to call it. Let's get the uh, Atlas up. There we are. Cool. Here we are. So I just had another, another coughing fit. Um, so this is with a warp augment. Let's get rid of that. So on the south side of our, our, our pit, we are going to be building this uh, contraption. It's a bit annoying it's dark, but it's just down this hole. This will eventually be kind of linked up to our inner base. I won't, have to I won't have to enter this through the uh, yeah, through the ceiling. Uh, but firstly, what we need to do is get rid of this stuff. We need to extend this tube really, really far down in each direction. I believe that this needs to be about 200 blocks long. Each plot is 8 blocks long, so what's 200 divided by 8? 200 divided by 8 is 25, so I think it needs to be 25 plots long, this being the middle plot, this one. So 25, take away 1, 22, half of that is 12. So you go 12 plots this way, 12 plots that way. I'm not going to film that because that is monumentally boring, um, but I'll catch up with you when that's all hollowed out, I guess. I didn't realise how much water there is underground. This is some PTSD stuff right here. But I was helping. And copyright. Okay, so that is done. The area has been hollowed out either side. It just skimmed past my home base so you see this little three by three just in front of me that's my starter base so luckily I, it was just to the right of that so i don't need to kind of replot my starter base which is quite nice um but yeah so i've got 25 plots now the next thing to do is to pave the floor just to make it something you know easier to build on and as we're going to be placing kind of three by three uh, xp blocks all the way to the end i'm going to have any block in the middle with a I like the kind of defined border, so ideally I think I would use refined iron or compact iron, but I haven't got that much iron on me at the moment, but what I do have is refined igneous rock for some reason. So I'm going to do a 3x3 of refined igneous rock, I believe, 
this is it's, it's going to be seven wide. This uh, a plot is eight wide, so I'm going to ignore this side of the plot, which I believe is the side that faces away from my base. It is. So the back end of this eight, I'm going to ignore. I could put chests in there for the time being. So I now want to center that onto this. I'm going to use some cool grey concrete either side. I got this concrete from uh, Bastion Concrete, which is an amazing concrete shop. Um, hopefully I'll be able to show that in a bit. So that's what I'm going to do, and I might even have the yellow and black kind of industrial kind of warning, you know, colour theme on on the on one on one side. So just past this, I'm talking crap. L let me go show you. Right, so here's some. Uh, I bought this from Bastion Concrete as well. So got some yellow, got some black. And the idea is just. one spacing apart and then alternate it so yellow's there, black's there and it'll be that all the way down so it kind of looks like some industrial warning you know don't step here kind of um, design very simple I'm not building this kind of this base I'm building now or the parts of this base is not going to be focused on the design the aesthetic it's mainly going to be function and technical builds and stuff like that i do have a plan for very aesthetic projects in the future when boundless kind of kicks up again and gets more updates but right now i've got i want to build a base that is that revolves around my kind of technical builds so and also make it look a little bit nice but that's not my forte i'm not good at making things look nice i like simple designs so this um this will do so what i'm going to do is do this all the way down to the end, either side, and then we'll see how that looks. I think I might have to add some gleam in there every now and then just to give us a bit of light. Let's just whack one in there. Maybe every like two blocks or something we'll put some gleam. Who knows? Um, but yeah, let's join back when that's done because that's going to take me some time. Oh, come on, man. <sighs> okay, that's done. Um, if you have a keen eye, you'll realize that the guild buffs just changed. That is because it is now the next day. Um, I took a little break. Um, I, f I felt a bit you know, worse for where I needed to go to bed. But this is now all correct, and it goes black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, all the way around. So now what we have to do is start the glide track, because the glide track, we're going to be using it to go forward, so we go across, forward, across, forward, across, forward for each block. I also extended the plot, one each side, uh, each direction, uh, just so if you see here, the border between the plots changes. Uh, that means that the border changes right here which the grey oxide stone is where we're going to be placing our blocks. So we're placing nine for every kind of block we go across, just like this. And I wanted the cutoff from the kind of the 25 plots to end exactly where we're going to stop placing the blocks, just so it's easier for me to kind of track it kind of mathematically, because it's 200 blocks exactly, it's 8 times 25, which means it's 200 times 9, doesn't really matter to you guys, it just means I can kind of work out the XP and if I need to change it or make it longer, etc. So we need to get the glide track in, just so you can have a bit more of a better grasp on what I'm actually doing. So as we're placing uh, three blocks tall, we need to go up three blocks and then we can put a glide track on top of those three blocks. So a glide track is obviously ice, maybe not obviously, you might have no idea what it is, but it's uh, ice, then two air blocks for your body and then trampoline above it. So now I'm just going to bring this across. I don't think it needs to go right up to the edge. I think it's just five wide. So I'll bring that across and then I'll do all the chiseling and the intricate bits that make me, you know, kind of maneuver back and forth. So the way you use this glide track is you'll stand here at the beginning and when you hold spacebar, you'll go, you'll get pushed across and then hopefully, if you're jumping here, 
and then you'll hit this bit of concrete into this bit of glass so you don't fall off the edge let's just demonstrate that now you line up there okay I need to put another block just there so it catches me and then it makes me go across like that so right here we've got the nice L shape which brings us to the next layer but we now need to stop ourselves here to then be able to do exactly the same thing the other side so another block there and then I think it's like that and a bit of glass just there so let's see if that works it does basically we're going to be snaking back and forth using this but how are we going to be placing the blocks beneath us we are going to be chiseling a gap in the center three just like this so when we go in between the blocks we are going to be holding space we're holding our you know left click right click actually we could be holding both of them but I'll get into why we're doing that later um, so as we go back and forth back and forth we'll be placing blocks like this as you see it only goes too high which is a problem which means we're gonna have to dual wield so let's for example let's make it a bit easier to see we we'll use the black and the cool gray concrete if I hold these both together so what I'm doing now is holding left and right click and now I'm just going to introduce the spacebar. So I'm holding left click, right click, and now spacebar. Just like that. As you'll see, I place black, I then place white, I then place black. So what that is, is I place right hand, I place left hand, I place right hand. Then onto the next level, it starts again with the right hand. So it doesn't equally distribute my left and right hands. It, it's every two right hands I place I place one left hand and it's also to do the speed as you saw if I just held one um, one stack down I'd only go too high but to be able to do the three high so I can place all the blocks down uh, I have to hold down both of my left and right mouse, uh, mouse keys that doesn't really matter too much because I will get to the point where I will run out of one of my stacks in my hands because the idea is I have a full smart stack in my left hand a small fart a small fart stack <laughs> my god a full smart stack in my left and right hand I can then place them down um, and then it'll run out and then I'll just get to that problem when I get to that problem anyway that's irrelevant for now all, all you need all you guys need to know is that I can't talk properly and I need to cough Ah, right, so all you need to know is that we're going to be going back and forth, back and forth, all the way to the other end with these little chisel gaps in, in between so we can place our blocks. And that is basically the design. So I'm going to get to work and copy this design all the way down, or at least quite a far way down, and then give you a bit of an example with a teaching pie and some machine titanium just to see how much XP we really can get. Right, so let's um, have a little talk about the huge news that Monumental is taking over Boundless. So Monumental is a game development company uh, based out of Austin, Texas, that um, owns a couple of games, like Mythgard and Crowfall. Um, maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. But the way I'm looking at it is, this is new life that wants to put money and you know, breed life into Boundless. So I only think it can be good, because Boundless was dying, right, which was a real shame, because in my opinion, Boundless has a, a huge, a huge idea in terms of, like, a foundation for a game, that it'd be such a waste for the game to fail just because of, you know, the lack of money, which, in my opinion, that's what Boundless was. It wasn't a lack of ideas, it wasn't a lack of a dev team. Uh, maybe it was a lack of a dev team numbers, but that's all to do with money, in my opinion. Now, I'm not a developer. I don't know the reasons why Boundless um, didn't succeed. I sure as hell bet that um, COVID did not help in the slightest, especially for a, a very small development team. And at the end of the day, people need to make money. People need to pay bills, pay the mortgage, etc. And Boundless, I assume, just wasn't generating that cash flow. Also, 
money is needed for advertising. Advertising is needed to get people to play the game. People playing the game will then generate more money, which will lead to more, you know, more money being put back into the, the development of the game, etc. So it's a big, a big wheel that needs to kind of keep going round and round and round. But it needs that kind of kickstart of um, money and or attention um, to kind of get that ball rolling, right? And I, I don't know a lot about um, Monumental or the guy who owns it or who's in charge called Monty. I have corresponded with him briefly and he seems very nice, very generous. And I think some other people can um, you know, support, my, support what I say there as well. I think... Money won't be an issue when it comes to Monumental. I remember seeing somewhere in the forums someone saying, you know, can you... Yeah, basically they asked Monty a bunch of questions, one of which was, can you, you know, can you support this game? Did you have what it takes? And his response was, I might be paraphrasing this, but his response basically was, our pockets are very deep. Now, that's a baller thing to say. I mean, that's like some gangster stuff, right? So, oh, yeah, did, you, did you have enough money to support the game? My pockets, my pockets are pretty deep. That's something that's pretty cool to say. And I've read up on Monty and what he's done before in the past, and he's had his hands in a lot of um, what's it called monetization of games. Albeit they weren't the same type of games, but I think when it comes to making money, Monty can do that. Now. The downside to someone who's good at making money, taking over a game, is people not trusting their motives or just seeing it as a kind of a cash grab. In my opinion, Boundless isn't really the obvious type of game to kind of make into a cash grab. It's not a mobile game, it's not this easily monetizable entity as it's an MMO and it would be quite difficult to kind of just chuck money into it you know it's not candy crush right candy crush yeah just pay for more kind of spins right but when you've got an mmo to balance and an economy to think about and you know a live servers and stuff like that i think it's a lot more difficult than just saying oh, i just wants it for money however i can see people's worry about how they are going to go about monetizing the game i know monty wants to get rid of um the price I think he wants to lower the price and ultimately make it free to play. Obviously, making game free to play, you'll have to actually let's scroll down a bit. There, we go, that's new to read. Um, making a game free to play, you obviously have to find the money somewhere else. So I will be very intrigued to see how they're going to find the money. I know that Boundless is about your kind of character and your identity online um, or within the world of Boundless. So I personally think that's quite an easy thing to monetize in terms of cosmetics. I personally don't like monetizing qubits because it doesn't give the game a good name. But I have no idea how they're gonna. I have no idea how they're gonna change the current monetary um, ways of Boundless. But in my opinion, if Monty's listening, I would pay money for skins and for cosmetics and stuff like that. I would not pay money for any pay to win type things i'm not this is not a threat <coughs> excuse me this is not a threat saying that if you make the game pay to win uh, i won't play it it's not because i don't think he would make the game pay to win but i know that i wouldn't play the game if it was pay to win in any sense i know the game some people think the game's pay to win at the moment but the fact that plots aren't pay to win it just means you reserve more space etc but in terms of paying money for cosmetics i'm a thousand percent down for that paying money for quality of life such as the gleam club yeah i'm definitely down for that also the cosmetics that come with the, uh, with the gleam club are the colored texts these aren't pay to win things i think these are perfectly fine to monetize so my to sum up my thoughts on boundless being taken over by monumental i think it's absolutely amazing like i'm so excited for when um, monumental have you know, put together a team i can start putting some development back into the game i do realize that it is going to be i believe within the year possibly i think when they when they took over whenever the date of this this post was uh september i think it was like 
just over a year was there, or at least a year was there, um, was their estimation. So don't expect Boundless to kind of quickly jump up and you know start getting development pulled into it. But just knowing that Boundless is not going to be dying is huge news. That's all we really wanted anyway from the devs before uh, this news of Monumental. It was, we just wanted to know that the game wasn't going to die. Because I know a bunch of people who've stopped playing Boundless or have gone on a hiatus because they thought the game was going to die. And same for me. Like, it's really hard getting motivated about a game that you think is just going to die and be left by the devs. But for have, to have somebody... Uh, who's passionate about the game, like Monty and the team he's going to be developing, um, come in and say, hey guys, your game that you love, is it's saved. You know, We are going to be putting money and effort and love into the game. It is huge. So, Monty, I'm fully behind um, you and your team for Boundless. If you need any help, <laughs> uh, definitely, if, if any help that I can offer, 100% reach out and I can do whatever I can. That would be amazing. Um, but yeah, so I think I'd love to hear your guys' opinions, uh, the viewers, on what you think about Monumental taking over Boundless. But those are my those are my thoughts on the subject. Because I have been asked by a few people, um, and my thoughts have stayed the same since uh, since day one. So it's not just my yeah, it's not just excitement taking over. I've actually taken a few months to really really give it a good think. Anyway, back to the lovely task of chiseling this um, this build. I, I, I do like this kind of um, repetitive type builds. It's quite, you know, it's, uh, what's it called? Soothing? Uh, metromizing? Relaxing is probably the better word, a bit like ASMR. But when this build's done, it's going to be pretty cool. I also did one of these big builds a while ago, not on this, um, this kind of let's play. But it was a lot of this kind of chiseling back and forth, trampoline, um, ice, you know, glide track stuff. It was quite annoying to do, but once it's complete, it is it pays back tenfold. And if this can make me a bunch of levels, if it works as well as I think it will, then it's going to be bloody amazing. So yeah, so let's uh, let's just fast forward until I've chiseled all this floor because this is not exciting. Okay, oops. I've chiseled the entire length of the ice. So I guess the next thing to do, uh, I don't think I can show it just yet. Let's get to the end. Right. So I think all I need to do now is chisel these trampoline bits just so I can go back and forth. It's every one, just like that, all the way down. And then add a trampoline bit to enter into here. So it's kind of like teeth, right? Like imagine like a teeth on a jumper, like a zip up hoodie, whatever. Or teeth in your mouth, you know, wherever you find teeth. But not like that film teeth. Don't find teeth there. But, um, so I'm going to do this all the way to the end. And then we'll finally, I think that, that'll be it. I think that'll be it finished and we'll be able to see exactly how much XP this thing makes. Um, I think it looks kind of cool. It's going to be quite, it does fit in with the kind of tech, kind of science-y lab kind of feel. I'm going to be linking it up to my main part of the base that I'm going to show you in a minute. I've figured out where I'm going to put this main part of my base, and uh, we'll get to that next. But anyway, now I've got to do some more boring stuff, which is the trampoline. See you in a bit. Boom, I have done. I have done it. I have done it. I've done it, finally. This is probably taking me about two hours maybe even less actually uh, to, f to build the entire thing I did break it into two days however we can now test out with the titanium so the idea is you get two stacks, full stacks so 900 but I haven't got that much titanium yet um, hold them in both your hands get up to the top obviously I'll make it a bit nicer look down, hold left click, hold right click and then hold spacebar to start the track. And you'll go back and forth, back and forth, reasonably quickly as well. I mean, look at that XP, just pile up. 
then you will eventually run out of one of the stacks, which is the it's not it's the issue I guess, but it's not like a big issue because it's still getting you XP. Now let's go right down to the bottom and look at this. It's so basically one big tube of uh, of stuff you know, of blockage, which after that all you got to do is get your hammer. Preferably a faster hammer. I mean, you know, you can use a uh, a mega fast brew. However, I have the uh, is it building safety? No, the builder's buff, which. Let's read this. Old Ocean Capitals weren't built in a day, but yours can be. Members get a 50% increase uh, chisel durability, cool, and a 50% to block placement speed. Now, this is the guild buff that really makes this work a lot nicer. Um, I'm part of the Reapers Guild. I think a lot of guilds have this buff anyway. Uh, but if you want to get this buff and, you ha and you're not in a guild, just join the Reapers Guild and then wait for the buffs to be applied. Uh, I believe they get applied well yesterday, so I think currently they get applied on Thursdays. So make sure you're in the Reapers Guild for the, to get that extra speed uh, placement. But that is basically what this build's about. So apart from you know tidying this kind of build up and adding like maybe adding a Maybe not a portal, because I, I want to link, basically, to this glide track that's taking us back and forth, back and forth. You can use that just to go places, so I can just go straight forward somewhere. So I want to link my main base, That that's what I'm going to show you, my main base, or the main area for my base. Um, I'm going to link that, this main area for my base up with all my different builds. So this is the first official build that we've made on this um, in this base. And my builds are going to be about technical things, so that is quite technical, I believe. It's a weird kind of fancy way to get XP. Some people might like it, some people might not like it. Uh, but this is the area of my base, as you've seen in the previous Let's Plays. I have dug down in the centre. This is the centre plot. Um, I don't, don't take full damage because of the guild buff that I've got. Uh, but this is going to be the center of our base. So one of these sides, we're going to have a glide track selector. If you don't know what that is, it's on my YouTube channel. You can check it out. But if you do know what it is, then that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Basically, I'm not going to go through what that is right now. But I'm going to have that here. And basically, you can select um, different places in my base, get in the glide track, and it will take you there. That's something for a future episode. Maybe the next episode. Who knows? Uh, but let's just see what I want to touch on next. Oh yes, the concrete. Okay, so I've been using a fair bit of concrete for that build down there. I want to show you, where am I? I want to show you what shop I've been using because buying all my concrete is not going to be sufficient enough for me because I'm going to be using a lot of concrete. As you'll see the cool gray color that I was using on the sides of, the, of that build we've just been doing. That's going to be my main colour of concrete, and I believe that's only available. Uh, the sand, I believe, is only available in. I think it's a sovereign planet if someone's got it. I'm not sure. So I'm going to be hunting for sovereign planets with cool grey sand. Then I'm going to be harvesting a bunch of that and then making my very own concrete. Also, going to be doing the same for the vivid yellow, which is, I think is vivid mustard, which is the colour, and also for the black. So basically what I'm saying is I'm going to need a kingling farm because buying all my concrete and buying all my materials, that's not how I do it. If I have excess money, I'll definitely put it into the community and buy some stuff. But in terms of concrete, where I'm going to be using absolutely millions of it, I'm going to need to be able to make my own. So let's just find out where that shop is. I totally forgot that you could warp to places. The past couple of days I've just been running everywhere. Um, but this is... I believe it's called Bastion Concrete. Uh, I might even be wrong. Yeah, Bastion. So, this concrete shop is pretty amazing. It's got so much stock of so many colours. Um, it is Bones 747, so Bones owns this. And they are keeping it up to date pretty well. So the colours that I use are over here. So they got the black, oxide grey, the cool grey. Very reasonable prices as well. But two layers of the, of the plain... Uh, 
um, concrete, and then they've got some pattern ones too, which I don't really use. Ash and grey, grey, all the colours you can really want. I believe they're going to do, I think they're doing every single colour that they can, and I think they price it differently depending if they have to get the the sand from stone, gravel, or just whether they can just straight up um, farm the sand. So obviously, if it's just the stone, the colour, they will have to break that down to gravel, then break that gravel down to, into sand, which would then increase the price. So let me just find you a easy portal to get to this place. Um, well, it's on Marix, 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 whatever the, the planet's called, and the location is here. So minus one thousand, min uh, so minus one thousand, positive one thousand five hundred. Uh, let's find a portal, shall we? Here we are. So the easy peasy hub is here. Uh, yeah, Bastion Concrete. That is definitely what it's called. It's on the west side of the easy peasy hub, and that is linked to the TNT network. And I still believe, I even believe that. If you just go to the Marix um, Planet Portal, yeah, you're on the, you go straight back to the Easy Hub. So they've actually got two portals there. So we now go to the west side, which is over here. There we are, and that's how you get to the Bastion Concrete, where I can get my, um, get my concrete. Okay, so I've done a bit of mining, done a bit of smelting, done a bit of alloy making, and I've got some more machined titanium. Uh, crafted. I've made a hundred extra and I've been testing out the um, the build just to find some of just to find kind of things that are wrong with it maybe things that I need to change and I found something. This is quite interesting so and that's actually quite important to the way that the build is. So let's just get started right at the beginning. Right so if I Let's just put a little bit in this hand and the main in the right hand. So let's use this for a little bit until this alloy runs out. I'm still surprised how quick the XP goes up. Can't wait until I get actual lucent, you know, decorative lucent gem blocks. Okay, that's it all run out. I need to get a way of getting out of here. Ideally, I use the entire stack. You know, the entire two smart stacks. I just haven't got that much titanium at the moment. So if I break this um, titanium on the way back, the reason it's a bit choppy at the moment, there's a few blocks that are missing, is because I was trying to pause the recording whilst using it, and that was kind of difficult. But yeah, so and so, so I broke, um, I broke that titanium on the way back to here. Now, if I want to start and do it again. Let's just break this up. You'll see I don't get any extra XP. XP doesn't kick in until here. So XP doesn't actually resume until 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. About a plot in. I don't know why that is exactly. Um, but the idea, to the, the, the way around that is I want to place all the titanium going this way, so going west. I then want to come back to the beginning and then break all the titanium. So I think it's to do with like the last action. So if titanium is here, I then break it and then instantly start placing it again, it won't give me XP. But if I place titanium here, and then obviously up there, and then I start by breaking this, by the time I've come around to start again, this area would have enough time without any blocks in it to then start give me more XP. So basically I need to go west, break everything, then come back. So what I'm going to do with that, as you see I've put a little uh, warp augment here to signify this, is a portal. So I've got some portal um, augments, uh, warp conduits, whatever they're called. I'm going to do this. I added a little ramp here because a reason. And I'll show you why in a bit. But let's get the token from this back one. Uh, XP block farm, whatever. It doesn't really matter because I'm not 
using loads of these tokens. Okay, whack that in there, put some of these... Oh, I need the epic. Yeah. I really wish they got rid of this epic. I don't think... Uh, let's use the volume crafting. I don't think you should have to have an epic and spend five points to be able to open a portal. So having this portal open here means that when I get down to the end, I can just jump in the portal and instantly be right at the beginning again. And I'll be on this level so that I, think I have to flip this. Just like that. Right, so let's imagine we're coming off the end of this um, off the end of this build. Bosh, 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 bosh. And now we go through the portal and we'll hit the wall, which is here. And then we're ready to get our hammer out and go. So let's just give that a little example here. Right. And I'll show and I'll explain this kind of um, little, little bit here. Right. So the way I did this was I come to this bit here, I obviously put a bit of sloped concrete, I hit this glass pane so I don't go any further, and I'm looking down at this point, placing all these blocks, and if I peek over the edge, I don't want to do that, because then I'll just end up placing blocks if I haven't placed everything. So what I'm going to do is put a block, um, a block blocker, I guess. So if I occupy this block, with some more glass, it means that I, the glass is always taken up the space, so I can't place any uh, anything else in that area. So I should place all those, and there we are. So if you're doing something where you're holding down right click placing a block and you don't want to place a block in that area, put something in that block that doesn't take up much space, for example a glass pane, um, you can also use like a lattice piece if you really need to, but the glass pane is just so bloody good. That's why glass panes are part of my kind of technical build um, toolkit because they they're so useful. They're useful in every single technical build I've ever done. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so they end up here. But I can start breaking everything, get to the end, which will obviously be here, and then. Just walk through here and start again and jump up top. I could probably make that a bit smoother, who knows. The other thing is I've been in creative mode trying to improve this and I think I'm on the right track to making this even better. However, it's not necessary at the moment and I'll leave that for a future, future video because I like the idea of making a build, specifically a technical build, and then be able to come back to it and improve it at a later date. Um, but yeah, so next episode, we are going to be working on the main part of the base, I'm pretty sure. Which I'll give you a little sneak peek in the design that I'm going for. Because I've already I've already kind of played around with designs. Uh, it's... Just take a look at it. So this is the idea of the centre part of the base. It's obviously not fully built up, it's just the bottom layer, just so I can get a, a sense of size. So I'm going to have the glide track selector here, so we can basically choose what parts of the base we want to go to, jump in the glide track, and then we'll go off to that area. Um, I've also got kind of three different ways of going out of the centre. It's going to be kind of, think like, futuristic underground lab meets Portal 2, the game, or Portal in general. Um, Yes, yeah, so that's a little sneak peek to what's going to be happening in the future episode, maybe even next episode. But anyway, this is a long episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions about anything I've built today, or anything in general, anything to do with the monumental takeover, whack it down in the comments of the YouTube channel, and I'll definitely reply. Um, but yeah, apart from that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next episode, which will be soon, I promise. Abo! Abo.